If you haven't already done so, friends, I want you to make big plans for 2024 because I think this year is going to be insanely chaotic, not only economically, but certainly prophetically, and we're going to see some really terrible things probably start to come to fruition. So whatever you're going to do, do it now. Plan big, and that's what we're doing here on the North property today. And within those big plans that you're going to make for your country homestead, I want you to plan first to pay off your debt, get that out of the way so that you can go full steam ahead on something like this. Let's get into what we're doing today. Spring is here on the homestead already as evident by that plum tree blooming out in the background. And I've got a ton of work to do and plans for this north property. I'm going to try to build a cabin for my family if they need a place to get to. And I need to clear a lot more space for food production. You saw the plot that I've already got cleared, but I need more fruit trees, grapes, etc. First thing I'm going to do is take out this little stand of pine trees behind me. They have pine bark beetle really bad. So what I'm probably going to do is create a burn pile so that we can just get those taken care of and hopefully kill off whatever pine bark beetle is in those trees. Gonna have to clear some safety paths here first. Get these dead pieces out of here. And friends, if you're wondering, why is he doing all this work? Why is he cutting down all these trees? Why is he clearing all this land? It's because I have to grow more food for my family. And you might be wondering to yourself, oh, things are okay at the grocery store. And I have a little garden in the back of the house. Well, that's just not enough. Do whatever you can, wherever you are. If you're in a small suburban lot, turn that entire plot of land into producing food for your family. But friends, if you didn't see what's going on with food and grocery prices right now, even over the last couple of years, but right now, they are at 11.3% of disposable income for an average household. That is the highest it has been in over 30 years. And it's not slowing down at all because food prices are notoriously sticky. That means once they raise the food prices, they never or almost never go back down at all. So what you're paying for food right now is not going to get any less. Is your paycheck getting any more? No, it isn't. Not at that rate. So friends, growing food for your family is so important. Take time, learn how to do it, transform every inch of your property that you can into food production. And that's what we're trying to do here among a few other things. And let me tell you also that shrinkflation is in total effect right now. I used to buy a jar of olives, because olives are great for you, and they're stuffed with garlic, even better for you. A 10 ounce jar of olives for $3.50 at Walmart. It's a, Wal it's a great value brand. Now the jar is seven ounces and it's 10 cents more. So it's 360 for seven ounces. It will never change from that. It will never go back down. That's just one small example. Compounded upon that is record credit card debt of $1.13 trillion. That is absolutely out of control. And I know it's because people's wages aren't increasing, there's a lot of inflation, and they're having trouble making ends meet. So I know probably some of you are, are hurting. Do whatever you can to not put another dime on that credit card, to make some extra money, and to pay off your debt immediately. I'm gonna harp on that throughout all of my videos, and I have many times before, but it's a message that everybody really needs to take to heart. And even compounded upon that are record auto loans of $1.61 trillion. That is absolutely bonkers. And at the same time, there's record repossessions because people cannot pay off those cars. Now that's 
a lot of fault of people not paying attention to their monthly finances, but also with dealers jacking up prices when there was a shortage of vehicles during the pandemic. But now those same dealers are hurting really bad because they have a huge glut of inventory that the manufacturers pushed on them for their allotments and they can't sell them because they're still, still too expensive and people are overextended. And one last statistic, there is record household debt in our country right now. That's above and beyond what our government debt is, which we are responsible for because it's taxpayer money. But household debt, the loans that we've all taken out are $17.5 trillion. Are we going to be able to pay that back? I highly doubt it. So I want you all individually to focus on your life, your family, and get rid of that debt. I'm going to keep harping on it. I'm telling you, because that is so unbelievably important. You don't want to see me cut down any more trees. So let me show you what we are doing and what we have planned for the rest of the property. So near this stand of trees that I'm working on right now, this is probably where my family cabin is going to go. My off-grid family cabin for any family that needs help and a place to stay. Of course, the other day you saw me working on the new garden plot with the weed fabric, the quick plant fabric, which is pretty awesome stuff. We got to get our bees back. We've got more bees on order and bees are a learning process for me. I didn't understand how deadly mites were and I didn't treat them well enough and often enough last year. So they all either died or swarmed and took off. Over here, we've got two mature pecan trees. They aren't doing that good. They've got a lot of woodpecker holes in them and they haven't produced pecans in probably two or three years at any significant amount. And honestly, I don't know how to bring their health back so that they do produce. They may just be too old, I'm not sure, um, and just kind of run their course. There are just, there's so many woodpecker holes in every, tree, every branch on er both of these trees. It's just absolutely insane. Let me orient you on the property. I just passed the pecan trees way in the distance over there. You can see my barn. That's probably an eighth of a mile away, give or take. And right along this line, between me and the barn, we are going to be putting grapes and blueberries and a lot of them. So that is going to be a huge blessing and a lot of good antioxidant producing fruit. And from there, I turn this way and you can see my original orchard that I started down there. Those trees are doing okay. The pears are the best. And then as I turn a little bit more, then you can see where the new garden plot is and then the bees are up over there. So before my friend Josh gets here with the mulcher, I need to take down even more of these trees. We've got this pine tree behind me, which is just randomly out in the middle of nowhere. That's got to get out of the way. I wish I had a saw big enough to take that down. That's a scrubby, broken, hollowed out in the center sweet gum tree, and it's dangerous, and I am not an experienced sawyer. So it's either going to stay there or I'll have to hire someone to come take that out of here. And then back over there is the stand of trees that I was working on. There's one of the pear trees. It's looking great. I got it pruned the other day when it was very cold outside, so that was good. And this is the other one, and of course the plum is in the background. This is the ones that I planted. There is one that the previous owner planted, and it's doing okay, but I've been able to shape these really well, and they haven't got any diseases, which is really nice because I have a lot of other fruit trees that have crazy diseases. I'm probably not going to get any apples because they've got canker, which is extremely hard to get rid of. So friends, I did want to tell you also that besides paying off the debt, please, please get yourself right with the Lord, study your Bible and get a relationship with Jesus. Because when everything um, hits the fan, that is the only thing that's going to matter. It's not going to matter how big your property is or how much food you had stored up. God will take care of you and you need to understand what it means to be on his side and it's not what the mainstream is. Remember, there was just a tiny handful of people 
that truly followed Jesus and the rest of the religious establishment was out for themselves. They manipulated the Word of God to benefit themselves and then they made up a whole bunch of their own rules. So the Bible and the Bible alone, sola scriptura, whatever's in there only. But be careful of false teachers that will pick and choose verses in the Bible that don't mean what they say they're meaning, which is why you are the one who needs to study. Only you can have that relationship with Jesus. Ask for the Holy Spirit to come into your heart to help you to understand the Word of God. And don't listen to false teachers. Okay, well, I've got some more trees to cut down and some more things to clear. So I hope you have a beautiful, blessed day, and I'll see you in the next video.